and 7% oxygen in your blood, your heart, and your brain will put you at about 27,000 feet. So the question I always like to lead off with is how long can you last without oxygen at that altitude? And the answer is, till you can't. Hi everybody, Jeff Simon and Jake Simon here from Social Flight. Now we have done a lot of, let's say, stupid things. We have flown to France in five hours in a bonanza. We've built a T-51 Titan Mustang inside our living room of our house without a clear path for exactly how the entire thing is coming out. And we've dedicated our lives to gathering aviation events and destinations, all to get people like you out there and flying. But today, we're gonna get stupid in a very measurable way in the interest of safety. We're here with the FAA and we are with their Prote chamber behind us, portable reduced oxygen training environments. And Jake and I are gonna go inside and we are going to go through their test to see what it's like when hypoxia sets in to try to be safer pilots in mm -hmm. the future. And we're gonna monitor all this by the use of the Massimo Mighty Set. Massimo has this medical grade device. The Massimo Mighty Sat is fantastic. Includes an app that goes along with it that measures all sorts of different parameters from your breath rate to, of course, your oxygen saturation, and it even records it. And we're gonna show you some of that information as we go ahead. The Massimo has been a strong supporter of Social Flight and their work helps save lives. It makes a big difference and we have discovered in our routine flying that at night or flying at altitudes that we didn't think should induce any type of hypoxia, it's surprising to see that it makes a big difference. So, are you ready to get started? I'm ready. All right, let's go do our pre-briefing and then get this experience with the Massimo Mighty Sat in the FAA's Prote Chamber. Okay, I'm JR. I'd like to welcome you to our PROTE. Of course, PROTE is our acronym for Portable Reduced Oxygen Training Enclosure. And what we're going to do today is let you uh, either discover or rediscover your hypoxia symptoms. Now, have either one of you ever been to hypoxia training before? Yep. So today, what you're going to do is establish your hypoxia symptoms. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take you up to a simulated 27,000 feet. Now, the way we simulate 27,000 feet is very effective. We use 12 air scrubbers around a plastic enclosure that's on an aluminum frame. It's not a pressure vessel. Basically what it is, it's a container that just holds a specific gas mix that we use to induce hypoxia. So by use of those air scrubbers, we'll pull the air out from within the enclosure. It's going to dump the oxygen back out to the hangar, but it puts the nitrogen from that scrubbed air back into the container. So the bottom line, right now you're breathing 21% oxygen in this classroom, when you go inside the pro, you're going to be breathing 7% oxygen. And 7% oxygen in your blood, your heart, and your brain will put you at about 27,000 feet. So the question I always like to lead off with is how long can you last without oxygen at that altitude? And the answer is till you can't. And based on what I mean by that, are we talking about time to death to altitude? That's roughly about 25 minutes at 27,000 feet. We're talking about time to unconsciousness. As an average, that's about seven minutes. Are we talking about time to useless consciousness? That can occur in about five minutes. Now, what useless consciousness is, is where you get to a stage of hypoxia where you're awake and you're somewhat functional, but you don't have enough function to put this mask on unassisted simply because you waited too long and now you don't have the muscular strength to do so. That can occur in about five minutes at 20, uh, 26, 27,000 feet. So today, what we want you to do is to go into our pro and get enough hypoxia for you to recognize, but not so much where you forget and develop hypoxia amnesia. So for that reason, i like for you to write down the three numbers on your sheet, 65, 3, and 5. Now, the first number, 65, and I've got them written up on the board right there, is going to pertain to your pulse oximeter. So at this time, it's going to put the pulse oximeter on the finger of your non-writing hand, preferably index or middle. Give out a few seconds to give you a reading. And of course, once you get the reading, you're going to flip it over. And you're going to read it just like this. All right, so the numbers aren't quite upside down. So essentially what you want to do when you get inside the prot, and since you're walking into an environment that only has 7% oxygen, you can imagine that top number on your pulse oximeter is going to drop and will continually drop until you put your oxygen mask on. We want that to happen today when it gets down to 65%. If it gets to 65, 
put your mask on. If it gets to below 65, immediately put your mask on. Why? Because that's a deep state of hypoxia that can lead to hypoxia amnesia, where you walk out of here and won't remember the entire experience, which could include your hypoxia symptoms. Of course, we want to remember our symptoms because the symptoms you get today more than likely will be the symptoms you'll keep for the rest of your life. So you'll always know what to look for, so it would be good to remember them. So when you go in there, we're gonna set you down. We're gonna put this mask on your lap. We're gonna put the clipboard right on top. For the first minute you're in there, we want you to do two simple things. Number one, look. And what do I mean by look? What's the first thing impacted by hypoxia? Typically, it's your vision. But in the daytime, it's a little tricky because of the nature of our eyes. We don't see much of a visual change, even due to hypoxia during daytime conditions. However, at nighttime conditions, pre-dawn, pre-dusk, or actual nighttime, you have a very hard impact on your visual vision due to hypoxia. So it's more of a nighttime function, but look for it. If you see it during the daytime, that's a pretty good symptom. All right, so you're gonna look for those uh, visual changes. Also, look at each other every now and then while you're in there, and look for the, what we call cyanosis, a bluing effect of the skin, because that might alert you that they're hypoxic, and if they're hypoxic, could you be hypoxic because of the same cause? So keep an eye out for that. So after you're in there and you've looked, I want you to feel. What do I mean by feel? Feel the first symptom that comes on, because more than likely that first symptom is gonna be your strongest symptom, the one you're gonna to use to identify hypoxia on yourself. Now, after that minute is up, what you wanna do is keep sight of your second objective, and that is the number three. So go ahead and write down the number three if you haven't done so on your sheet, and that pertains to how many symptoms you want today. No more than three symptoms. Once again, if you get four, five, or six symptoms, you might get into that area where you develop hypoxia amnesia, and that's our biggest fear because knowing your symptoms, since they're never gonna change, it's a benefit to you. So keep it no more than three symptoms, and the last number is five. You have up to five minutes to get those three symptoms. Now, will you need five minutes to get those three symptoms? It's unknown because we don't know what your physiological state is, and you don't know what your physiological state is. But if you go in there, and you get your symptoms within one minute and you have to put your mask on, obviously you're having a bad physiological day. Does it mean the hypoxia is any different? No, it's the same hypoxia, it just came on quicker. It could take you five minutes to get your symptoms today because you got a very good physiological state. And what entails that? Good sleep, good hydration levels, good nutrition levels. Again, not having carbon monoxide from doing the walk around or alcohol in your system, things that can cause our physiology to dip and it calls our hypoxia resistance also to dip. So if you go in there today and you last five minutes, great. That's not gonna be the case tomorrow, it may be a lot less, or if you only last one minute, you could be five minutes tomorrow. But what is always consistent with hypoxia, you will always get symptoms, and if you know what they are, you know how to identify it and put the mask on. Now speaking of, when you're in there and you've had enough hypoxia, you're ready to put your oxygen mask on, we're gonna use this AROX mask, which is a demand system, which means you got the inhale to get the flow of oxygen. Simply all you gotta do is take it, put it to the face. When you take in one inhalation, you'll get an initial recovery. By the time you take in the second inhalation, you'll have a full recovery. But once you put your mask up, we're gonna ask you to leave it up, simply because two doses of hypoxia in a short period of time can bring about a hypoxia headache. So once you put it up, leave it up. Before you put it up, Make sure you got good symptoms that you can use in the aircraft because this is an opportunity you might only get once in your lifetime, so make the best of it. Right, do any of you have any questions or comments on what we did or are going to do today? No, I think we're all set. All right, let's go have some fun. All right, thank okay. you. <laughs> My pleasure. You want to me? All right, hold that up for a second. Are you both ready? Okay, Matt, go. Let know when you're ready. Okay, we'll start at the time now. Oh, we are at 7,000 feet, so well. Uh, yes, sir. First thing I want you to do is look and feel. So look at the floor top, which gauge our baseline vision for a color. Also, you can look right here at this color wheel. There's a small eye chart right in the middle. That'll help you with your visual cue. You see how that changes over the next few minutes. And now look at each other's facial coloration. And we'll see how much that changes also, because that's a good indication of hypothesis. Just showing 100. Now feel. You've been off for 30 seconds. Do you feel a symptom as of yet? All right, okay, and it will come on. But usually that first symptom is your uh, symptom that you're gonna use in the aircraft, because it is probably gonna be your most dominant, strong symptom. 
Right now, it's been off for 45 seconds. So go down to item four at the bottom of the worksheet to the one minute column. Item number four. Go ahead and check off the symptoms you feel and look at that oximeter data and write that down at the bottom of the column. All right, at this time, go to the top of the worksheet, find the crossword puzzle, the math, the maze, and try some of those cognitive skills. Now let's go with Jeff. Jeff, tell everybody what symptoms do you feel right now? What's your symptoms? Not for? much. Not much right now. Not much right now. Okay. So what, uh, a like what are Maybe a little bit of lightheaded. Yeah. What's your symptoms? A little right? lightheaded. Okay, very good. Okay, you've been off one minute, 30 seconds. Update your vision. Look at the floor. Is that any better or worse? Look at the color wheel, the visual acuity, a little eye chart in the middle, and look at each other. I'm starting to see a little side gnosis on each other's faces. Okay? Yeah, sorry, you can hold it like this for the camera. So then the camera. Okay, everybody go down to the two minute column at the bottom of the sheet, item four, write down the pulse ox data that you see and the symptoms you feel. Let's go back to Jeff. Any additional symptoms, Jeff, that you picked up? Are the symptoms the same? Little bit of dizziness, perhaps. Okay. And Jacob, tell everybody what your symptoms are you feeling right now. I'm starting to feel more dizzy and a little slow in my vision. Okay, very good. Okay, been off for two minutes now. Go back to the top of your worksheet. Try the crossword puzzle, the math and maze. Let's see how you're doing there. Two and a half minutes now, look down to four once again, update your vision, look around the room in the visual acuity chart, and look at each other. Any little more cyanosis is telling us that uh, you're becoming more you're hyper, a little hyper, paler. Hyper, and so on. And now I'm feeling yeah, pretty slow. 45 seconds. Okay, Jeff, tell us your symptoms. What symptoms do you feel right now, Jeff? Still a little fatigue, um, um, perhaps okay. a tiny bit of numbness starting. But Jacob, what are your symptoms? And Tell dizziness. us what your symptoms are. Yeah, I'm feeling really slow, like pretty delayed in how I like, how I'm looking. Right. Yeah, three minutes, we're gonna have item four, three minute column. Once again, update the symptoms you feel and your pulse oximeter data you're seeing. And I want each of you to write down the following heading. Jeff, Jacob, write down the following heading of one, two, five. Write down the heading, one, two, five. One, two, three. And also, beside that, I want you to give me the transponder code for lost calm. Write down the transponder like code now. for lost calm. Jacob, write down the transponder code for lost calm. Looks like we got a 69. I'm definitely yeah, getting a tingling. 67. And a 75. Right, now I'm down getting dizzy. Four minutes. Go down to item four. Four minute column. Check off your symptoms Tingling. once again and update that pulse oxygen. Dizziness, that. numbness now. You're definitely tingling and dizziness. Hey, I've got a task for you. I want you to do this out loud so I can hear you. Count backwards from 100 by now. threes. Jacob, you ready? Yep. Count backwards 100, 100 97, 97, continue. 96, 95, 94. 93. Then are you doing it by threes? 91. Four by threes. Oh, by threes. 100, 97, 94, 93, 91, 94. Okay. That's gone. 96. Stop right there. You're going off for four and a half minutes. So definitely tingling, dizziness, and I don't think it's vision, I think it's mostly visionness and a slur in my voice. And are you ready for oxygen? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and put that oxygen on. Okay, now look right at the camera, let's see if we can see a facial change on the color. Yeah, it's starting to pinch up just a little bit. The recovery doesn't take very long at all. You just gotta get that mask to your face, slow down that breathing rate. But that's what you're doing. That's generally still back to normal. Okay, and Jacob, are you getting back to normal? All right, very good. Very fast recovery. So this time I'm going to turn you over to Roger. He's going to give you some instructions and I'll meet you back in the classroom. Good job, Jacob. All right, Jeff, let's start with you. What was your symptoms today at 27,000 feet? Well, at first I didn't feel anything. 
at, at all. I was a little, I was nervous about it happening, so that was a little hard to differentiate between what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking I was going to start seeing a color thing, but I didn't see any kind of no. a color thing. So the first thing I started to feel was just a little not myself, a little kind of a vague feeling, a little kind of sort of maybe dizzy, but mm -hmm. just barely. That was the first thing I noticed. Okay. And what was your secondary symptoms you got besides that that you can recall? Uh, after that, the second thing was tingling. Mm -hmm. That was what I started to notice uh, uh, at first was, was a little, a second was a uh, tingling, tingling sensation. Okay. And both of those were my main symptoms that just kind of continued. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they just stayed with you for the rest of the experience. Of those two, which was the strongest, the tingling or the initial symptom? I think that the initial one was probably the one that kept progressing. The tingling is the one that seemed the least okay. natural or really out of the ordinary. Okay, so that one really got your attention. Yes. So you could use the two symptoms together to help you identify hypoxia. That's great. Did they come very close together or were they a little time the separation? The tingling came second and it okay. was time delayed. Okay. So I could see uh, myself in real flight missing the first one and feeling a little bit yeah. like just tired or just a little out of it. But the tingling isn't a yeah. normal thing. And there's your danger with hypoxia in that if you've never experienced it, how do you explain that first symptom when you don't even know what it is? And by the time you identify it, it's too late. So that's why you always want to use that first one. So hopefully that with a combination with a pulse ox will get your attention. Yeah. Well, let's go over to Jacob. Jacob, what did you get today, sir? So I definitely started with, I think the same kind of thing with um, uh, just feeling very slow in I would move my head and I felt like my, the vision or my eyes were lagging. Like tracking. Yeah. 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 So I think yeah. Um, that was definitely the first thing and uh, you know, just started to feel a little bit lightheaded, a little bit dizzy, but I think, yeah, the eyes, the, they felt the, delayed. So it was more of a visual impact for you then? Yeah, yeah I think that was definitely the first thing. And then I, I think by like minute two, I started feeling tingling that kind of started in my forearm, mm -hmm. kind of going down towards my hands. And then closer to minute four, I started feeling it in my thighs. The good, good, so, good. Um, yeah. So. If you had to sum it up, what was your strongest symptom that really got your attention to tell you to put your mask on? I think the strongest is definitely feeling slow, feeling like my eyes and my vision are behind. So cognitively and then the visual tracking. Yeah, I've heard people describe it as almost like the early days of a virtual reality where you didn't have the frame rate and things kind of <laughs> jerked and tracked when you go along. Yeah. Yep. All right, very good. Now, uh, let me ask you something, Jacob. Did I give you an additional task to perform at 27,000 feet? Um, Maybe a, a vocal one or a verbal one? You said write down a heading or write down a track. Okay, you wrote down the track. Or what was the heading that you wrote down? Um, I wrote down 125. Okay, that's correct. And what was the, uh, the, uh, the transponder code I asked you to write down? I wrote down 7700. And, and that's for? That would be for... Um, uh, so I actually don't believe Yeah, it. there you go. Yeah. So that's actually what's for lost comm. That's what I asked you to wrote down there. And Which of course, 7,700 will get their attention that's too. That's okay. Whatever. You're one ahead of me because you said lost comm, and the first thing I wrote down was 121.5. <laughs> <laughs> and Close then I was like, oh, wait yeah. a minute. He said transponder. Yeah. And then before I even got that, we were on other things. So it's okay. And yeah. I remember so I was looking down because I showed him that I got down to, I think, like 69. Mm -hmm. And I think I wrote down 77. Oh, okay. So a little mental confusion there. Yeah. I think I, yep. Now, let me ask you this. Did I give you another task to perform? Something you had to do out loud? Um, oh, count down from 90 or count down by three from 100. Uh -huh. And, and did you follow those instructions very smoothly? No. <laughs> no, not at all. In fact, you started off, but then you would always resort to 95, 94, 93. Yeah. So we had to start you over a couple times to get you to do it by threes. Do you remember how much of a struggle that was? I think I definitely struggled. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to indicate that on yourself, but I can see it. If I get a person who's very hypoxic, let's say they're just on that borderline where they're about ready to put their mask on, all I gotta do is ask them a higher math question. If I do that, it just drains them. You can just see the hypoxia just drain them right out of their face. So 
it's quite amazing when you kick in that brain power that it takes you into a deeper state of hypoxia. And of course, flying is more cognitive than it's physical. So therein lies the danger. All right, you have any questions on what you did today or uh, comments? Okay, let me ask you this. What did you see on hypoxia? Was you able to see any cyanosis on your partner there? So I, I don't think I was able to pick up on that. I think I was so taken back by, I would try to look over to him yeah. and I'd be delayed. And even yeah. when you said, oh, look at your partner. Yeah. yeah. And I think I was so focused on my lack of ability. To and your that. vision doing tack, 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 tack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if, I, if you could have looked at each other, you were a very deep shade of blue which okay. is very apparent, but you didn't color shift hardly at all, which is also normal. We see that either you do or you don't. It's one of the two. Yeah, I noticed you You were looking a little yeah. blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also command response items. You can't really pick that up on yourself, but with the command response items I were giving you, there were delayed responses to my commands. So it'd be like you're flying into right seat, left seat, trying to do command response that way, or ATC trying to talk you down you can see how difficult that would be. Hmm. All right, so that's all we got for you. The top sheet is yours. We call that evidence. Don't leave it behind. And the rest of that stuff is government junk. So we appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you very much. much. Our pleasure. All right, that was crazy. I mean, you know, I knew that going in here, you kind of get stupid, but uh, it, it was, uh, I was very anxious going into it. And at first, when we got in and started, we kept, Jake and I kept looking at each other because we were still at 100, because you breathe pure oxygen before you go in and when we were setting things up. And so we kept seeing 100 and 100, and I think that was adding to the confusion. And then all of a sudden it started to drop. And so what did you feel at that point? So um, again, when we first went in, it took a little bit of time. I forget exactly what it is, but we'll go back in the video and uh, try to dissect as how long it actually took us to drop. But the first thing is I started feeling uh, a little bit dizzy, a little bit lightheaded, and then very shortly after that, started feeling that uh, my brain would want me to kind of turn and look and uh, kind of follow the instructions, and my eyes were kind of falling behind. And that was kind of the first uh, uh, instance where I was like, oh, this is my first symptom. Going on from that, maybe closer to two minutes, I started feeling tingling kind of go down my forearm and then four minutes, that tingling kind of went down my leg. Um, I only remember that kind of going on the right side of my body, which is interesting, but that is, again, all that I remember right now. Um, wow. But it was a great experience because we do a lot of flying. We, um, we flew out to the Glacier National Park in Montana, and we were at you know, 14,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of flying at night sometimes, and um, you know, sometimes we're at uh, a little bit above 8,000 feet, and we like to be on oxygen at night, um, kind of at those altitudes. And it's really good to know that when we're at those altitudes or we're flying at night, um, that we're not trying to figure out, is this a symptom of hypoxia? I right. know, and I'm starting to feel a little bit delayed or I'm feeling a little um, uh, lightheaded, yeah. or I'm starting to feel tingling, that's, you know, we gotta start descending and get some oxygen or use, yeah. Um, it's really good to know. I mean, in my case, it started with feeling a little, you know, a little vague, a little out of sorts. And then uh, I felt the tingling and then the dizziness was the last part, uh, last symptom for me. And so this is something now that we know. And it, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to know for the rest of our lives is the first symptom of hypoxia. And so special thanks to the FAA safety team for having their portable reduced oxygen training environment available here. Uh, really great. It's an, it's an awesome thing. If you get any opportunity to go and do this, whether you visit Air Venture out in Oshkosh or another FAA safety event that where they're bringing the Prote Chamber, go do it. It's really important. It's important to safety and, uh, and it could save your life someday by seeing a symptom before it happens. It can happen at altitudes lower than you might think. And so for Social Flight, I'm Jeff Simon. This is Jake Simon. Thanks so much for joining us for this special episode. And thanks to Massimo for having the Massimo Mighty Sat device that we use along with the app. Uh, it's just been great. It was great to work with here. It's a fantastic device and it's medical grade, which means it's gonna give you much better quality than you can get from anything else you might just find out there on the internet. Until next time, I wish you all blue skies.